You may have heard the term miniature or tilt shift effect. The miniature effect is when things in an image or video look miniature or like toy versions of what they actually are. But the term tilt shift actually refers to the camera lens's ability to shift and tilt. Actually, the miniature result is kind of a side effect of using a tilt shift lens in a very particular way. The reason things look miniature is because your eye believes it's seeing something close up and small because of the seemingly shallow depth of field. When you typically see something with a shallow depth of field, you need to be fairly close. So when your brain is looking at something with a shallow depth of field and it's still tiny, your brain thinks it's seeing a miniature or toy version of that thing. So we won't go into the tilt shift lens specifics, but just know that the tilt of the lens causes a tilt in the focal plane, and that results in the middle band of the image being in focus while the top and bottom bands are out of focus, giving you a very similar effect to a shallow depth of field. Now let's talk about creating the miniature effect you're probably here for. I'm going to assume you want to create this effect with a CG program like Blender or Maya. I'm going to show you how to do this in Blender, but if you're familiar with another program, you should be able to figure that out as well. And one of the methods I'm going to show you, you can even use a program like Photoshop or GIMP. So let's start with the setup. What you're shooting needs to be small in the frame and you should shoot from above at about a 45 degree angle. That's the perspective you would have if you were looking at something that was actually really small that was in your hand or on a table. So it's important that the setup is right, otherwise the effect won't quite come off right. I'm going to quickly show you how you can get this shallow depth of field effect here. We're gonna do this in a simplified city scene here made completely of blocks using Blender. When we're talking about shallow depth of field, the thing that matters is focal length, focal point, and f-stop or aperture size. Changing the focal length in Blender gives us this zooming effect, for example. When trying to get the miniature effect we're talking about, we want a fairly wide angle of view, so we're going to pick 22 millimeters. The other thing that matters is the focal point. This is where a CG program like Blender is great because we can just select the object we want to be in focus and then if we move the camera or we, are, we move the object, we don't have to change the camera settings. Just to make that apparent, we're going to arbitrarily increase the focal length so everything is completely out of focus. Then we're going to make sure the depth of field box is checked. Now we can use the dropper to select an object. After we click on an object in the 3D viewport, the object is now in focus. So we're gonna do that process one more time, except completely zoomed out, just so you can see how it would work. So you may have noticed that everything is in focus because our shallow depth of field is not that shallow yet. To get that shallow depth of field we need for the miniature effect, we need to change the f-stop, which is the aperture size. And the only thing you need to remember is the smaller the number, the bigger the aperture is. This is another place where using a program like Blender is advantageous because we're going to decrease the aperture down to 0.005. And it's impossible to buy a camera that has an aperture that large. But in Blender, you can just type it in and like magic, we have that shallow depth of field. That's why you need a special lens like the tilt shift lens that fakes this effect if you wanted to do this with a real camera. It's also why your eyes think you're looking at something small because for almost all cases, it would have to be small to get this effect. The other way we can get a focal band that makes things look miniature is by using programs like Blender to blur parts of the image. Like I said before, you can use a program like GIMP or Photoshop or many others, but we're gonna to stick to Blender for now. The image we're using here is good because it's shot from above with our subject matter, which are people in this case, being very small. So the miniature effect will come off really well. You're gonna use the compositor to do this. Because I'm using the compositor, the method for doing this is pretty specific to Blender, but the general idea should hold for other programs. There are two main components to pulling this off. 
you need a way to blur the image and you need a mask to tell the program where to not blur the image. In Blender, we're going to use a blur node for the blurring and a box mask node for the mask. In Blender, you could have also used the defocus node or the directional blur node for the same effect, but we're going to stick to the blur node. I also used the color ramp to fine tune the mask. At this point, I'm going to assume you know the basics of how to use the compositor. So just pause the video here and recreate the node graph. There are two blur nodes here. The top blur node controls the blurring of the mask and the bottom blur node controls the blurring of the image. We blur the mask because we don't want a sharp line between the non-blurred and blurred portion of the image. We'd like to have a gradient, so we blur the mask. We can also use the mask node to move the mask around. The white portion doesn't get blurred and the black portion of the mask does. We control this by plugging the mask into the factor in the mix node. I'm also using a color ramp node to control how the gradient part of the mask is applied. Finally, there is a hue saturation node I'm using to give the image some more color, but that part isn't necessary. 